Introducing the Coswheel T20 e-bike. What's up guys, welcome back to another e-bike review. Today we are reviewing the Coswheel T20. 48 volt, 20 amp hour battery, some pretty good specs, dual suspension. I'm excited to see what this bike looks like. Let's open it up. There's the front wheel and there's also two fenders. It's a pretty cool design for the frame. You can kind of use this for storage. Let's see what they've included in this box here. Helmet save life. Wear your helmet like a goofball, guys. We have the front axle, metal pedals. We've got a couple of reflectors. We've got the nuts for the front axle, some hardware for the fenders probably, and a little tool bag. And then we've got a charger, 48 volts at three amps. Well, let's start by getting the front wheel on the bike. And then with the wheel, let's make sure the brake disc is on the caliper side, which is the left side on this bike. Slide brake disc into the caliper. There we go. Then I usually like to have the lever side of the front axle on the uh, non brake caliper side. Then the cone shaped spring, the small side goes in first. And then the nut, we'll tighten that up just finger tight basically. And then this quick release lever does the rest of the tightening. There we go. Next, let's mount up the handlebars. In order to install the handlebars, we're gonna need to use some of these tools they included. For shipping reasons, they always ship these with the steering column backwards. So you wanna flip that around by loosening the top bolt, removing that, and then you loosen up the other two bolts on the steering column. They're kind of just like clamp bolts. Once they're loose, it pops right off. Then we can flip that back around, replace the top bolt. And before we tighten these bolts down, let's install the handlebars. So we're gonna go ahead and remove all four of these bolts holding on this front mounting plate. And we're gonna have to move the display out of the way and then we can go ahead and install the handlebar. And then you put that front plate back on and you just tighten up all four bolts, it's that simple. This is why I didn't tighten down the stem bolts yet, because now I can use the handlebars to gauge just how straight the steering stem is. And that looks pretty straight there. So let's go ahead and tighten down these bolts. Okay, we're all good. Oh, that's where the keys are. They're zip tied to the back of the battery. So there we go, we've got two keys and you use these to unlock the battery and that's how you remove it 48 volts 20 amp hour pretty big battery dang then to install the seat post you're gonna loosen up that lever and then just jam it in there 
Dang, that can get pretty tall. We'll start out right about there. Then to tighten it back in, just tighten down the knob on the left side, finger tight. And then crank down the lever. Let's install the pedals. Then I'll use the wrench that they included to tighten it the rest of the way. Now let's install the fenders. I'm gonna start with the back one, and I don't think these tabs are supposed to be bent like that. Probably just happened in shipping. Not a big deal, we'll just bend them back. And then I guess we just slide the fender in under the luggage rack. And then I got one of those little bolts out of the hardware pack. I'm gonna put it through that mount and thread it into this little tab coming off the frame of the bike. And then we'll just tighten it up. There we go, it's as tight as it can get. The fender mounting really isn't in the manual, but I think you're supposed to use that other tab on the other side of the bolt and then thread a nut onto that just to kind of hold the fender better. This nut wasn't included, so I had to find this in my nut collection. I think it goes this way. I'm going to mount up the headlight onto the front. Use the same bolt that's going to mount the fender to mount the headlight, just like that. Alright, that's all tightened up. There's really nowhere to mount these extra like support brackets for the front fender. So I don't know what their plan was. It's not in the manual. But I think I can pull this nut off the bottom of the fork tube and make a little bracket. Now I've got my two little L brackets here. Go ahead and install it onto that little bolt coming out of the bottom of the fork tube. Definitely want to make sure that nut is nice and it's pretty tight. And then I had to find a nut that fits that bolt. I think that means it's tight enough. Now I just got to do the same on the other side. Alright, good to go. Fender is mounted. Now all that's left to do is plug it in and charge it up so we can take this bike on a test ride. The charging port is on the back of the battery. There's a nice little door covering it, keeping the water out. And there we go, it's red. That means it's charging. So now we wait. I just found this reflector laying around and I'll just put this on that front mount just so it looks like it's meant to be there. <laughs> wow, it's like it was made to go on there. <laughs> all right, it's the next day and the battery should be all charged up. Yep, shows green. Go ahead and unplug it. So let's go on a test ride. Let's power it up. Power's on. Let's see, we have five pedal assist modes. Trip, odometer, max speed, and average. Oh, it's in kilometers per hour. I gotta change that. Well, can't find anything online. Let's check the manual. There is nothing in the manual about anything about the display. I'll just leave it in kilometers per hour for now. Let's just go for it. Let's hit the road. The seat position is going to take a little getting used to, but yeah, at high speeds, feels good, it's nice and steady, nimble. Oh, brakes work really good, wow. <clears throat> Pedal assist, feels good. Dang, for 500 watt, it feels fast. I have a 750 watt e-bike too, and to be honest, it doesn't feel much less powerful than that. 
a turn signal. I don't know if anyone can see the turn signals on this bike with the rack installed, but I still use them. It's nice to have those actually. The Hornet's kind of cute, not going to lie. Now we're throttle going 60 kilometers per hour, which is this many miles per hour. Keeping up with traffic, I mean, it's not a slow bike. Not at all. Now let's see how it does with a steep hill and throttle. Now I can kind of feel the that it's less power than my 750 watt e-bike. Let's try pedaling a bit. Whoa, okay. This bike wheelie is so easy. Oh my gosh, it wheelies so easily. So if, if you want to learn wheelies on a bike, this is a great bike to do that on. Let's talk about the front suspension now. It's not bad. It has kind of short travel with these big rubber things they put on them. I wonder if I take those off, if you can use more of the front suspension or maybe that's, maybe that's all there is. But the back suspension's nice. It's, yeah, definitely nice to have that. All right, brake test, super steep hill. And we're locked up the back wheel. Yeah, those brakes work really good. That guy's looking at me like I'm crazy. <laughs> I kind of, I mean, I can see where he's coming from, to be honest. Let's hit a jump off a speed bump. Whoa, oh my gosh, I got a lot of air. All right, bumpy road test. Oh yeah. Feels good. The suspension is really good on this bike. Might be my favorite part so far. Oh, I just bottomed out the front suspension, so maybe don't do jumps on this bike. Little jumps, though, are okay. Let's hit the trail. Be careful because this thing wheelies almost too easily. <laughs> you can loop it out and real quick. Feels good on the trail. With the front and back suspension, man, it's smooth. All right, let's see if we can do the drop on the bridge. Oh yeah. The Shimano shifter shifts real nice and smooth. Yeah, feels good. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, I'm okay. Wow. So, something to note is that the brakes are reversed. For most bikes, oh my handlebars got a little twisted there. Um, I thought I, I was gonna do, a <laughs> I was trying to do like a power slide with the back wheel and lock up the brakes, but the right brake lever is usually the back and on this bike it's the front. So I locked up the front brake and flew over the handlebars. So. I might actually switch those just because it feels weird for me. Yeah, we're okay. All right, we still have to do the ultimate test and that is, can we pedal it up a steep hill without the motor? Zero, pedal assist. First gear, oh yeah. This bike's totally pedal pedalable. Yeah, it's not bad. Pretty lightweight bike, so that definitely helps. And the gearing's nice and low. Opposite of the motor, the hub motor, which is geared high. 
All right, that's an e-bike. What am I doing? <sighs> Made it home in one piece, barely. We went eight kilometers and the battery gauge did not go down at all yet.